I got started looking at the life of, she's now known as St. Kateri Dekaguita, um, because uh, I'd come across some of the writings about her and began to realize that a lot had been written at the time about this young woman uh, who was Mohawk. <clears throat> and I began to realize that it was actually more, there was actually more biographical material about her than any other indigenous person of the Americas at the time of contact, more than more than about Pocahontas, more than about Moctezuma, and you know, from then on, you get into almost nothing. So, the the um, attraction for me with this material, which is you know several hundred pages of details about her life, is here's an opportunity to personalize a story that had always been told in kind of general and impersonal terms. We know Europeans come to the New World. We know that uh, Native uh, Indigenous peoples' uh, lives are phenomenally affected, that there's tremendous uh, mortality, death, violence, uh, displacement. Um, we know that in general terms, but what what we never really had any handle on was what does it mean to be a individual person undergoing these uh, events. So it looked to me like an opportunity to to do that. Um, the challenge was this 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 was right this was religious writing in the hagiographic mode, meaning. This, this, her life story was written by missionaries who were convinced she was a saint, so they had to write her life in the way that a saint's life is written. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of distortion that comes in when it's a, it's a really, it's a story of virtues and symbols and emblematic uh, anecdotes. So the trick was trying to extract from this these materials written by Jesuits in the 17th century some understanding of what the human life was that lay behind these documents. Because you know, um, <clears throat> I say there was distortion. There are there are no historical sources that are transparent. And these ones, the, the sort of uh, non-transparent aspects were a lot uh, more obvious than maybe for some other people. So, um, so that's what drew me to it, forced me to kind of come to terms with, for example, the literary genre of the saint's life and what its conventions are in order to kind of decode things um, uh, to get more acquainted with the uh, historical ethnography on the Iroquoian peoples and so on and so forth um, to learn about what what a Jesuit was and what what their motives might be what their background would be what they would mentally bring to this encounter uh, so in the process I got to know as much about this young Jesuit, Claude Chauchetier, who wrote her life, as I did about her, and it turned out they, they were, uh, you know, inseparable parts of the story. Um, so I ended up, I started out wanting to write a biography of an indigenous woman. I ended up with a kind of, in a certain sense, dual biography of two people who eh, personally knew one another and came from opposite sides of the world, in a sense. Uh, so it was a way of personalizing things, in a, if you will, on both sides. Uh, so that's, a, that's what originally attracted me to it, and that was sort of the procedure. Um, I guess another part of your question, I, I, I also edited a book called Colonial Saints uh, with Jody Billenkoff, and that was that came out of a conference that I organized in Toronto uh, in 1999, I think it was, where um, in doing this research I realized this is not an exclusively Canadian story. Uh, something like this is happening all over the place, in Peru, in Mexico, 
uh, and elsewhere. So um, I got together people from uh, different parts of the world that had worked on uh, life stories of indigenous people told in this religious uh, way. Um, so we had art historians, we had literary specialists, we had a historian who studied the persecution of Quakers in 17th century Massachusetts, uh, uh, and so on. And um, it was it was quite a it was quite an interesting encounter of these scholars. We had different disciplines. We had we had people giving their papers in Portuguese, in Spanish, in French, in English. We had European people, um, and so we put it all you know eventually put together um, uh, most of the papers in a uh, in a volume which entitled Colonial Saints. So it was. Um, you know, for me, coming out of a Canadian history background, it was a, a nice occasion to interna internationalize um, the uh, the kind of research I was doing. And I think I think there's been a lot more of that on my part and on the part of other people of kind of breaking a little bit beyond the national boundaries of Canadian history and realizing that the phenomena we're looking at often are better understood if we kind of open things up a little bit and uh, get in touch with sort of similar uh, phenomena and, and scholarship that's going on in other countries and in some cases in other disciplines as well.